welcome very much to today's uh, webinar, Dalmayr, on our new Panamera W series. My name is Josef Braun. I run product marketing and PR for Dalmayr here out of Germany. And I think we want to immediately jump into media's res for the next 30 minutes. I want to start the presentation with, uh, well, actually the headline of our press release announcing the Panamera W series, because there is a few important things that basically we want to cover today. The first one is that uh, I will not only show a product, a camera, you will also not see any tables with any technical features or things like that. I'd rather would like to focus on the economical aspects of a total video security or video surveillance solution because as we know from experience and probably some of you if you are installers in the call can share it that um that experience experience that the economical aspect of the total solution total cost of ownership achieving real security goals is one of the least well uh, established aspects of video security technology and the other thing well what you can see here is of course the functionality when it comes to capturing large areas with video technology and then on the head headline so to say you can uh, see that we will also talk about a probably innovative way of assembling, mounting, installing the new solution. Uh, from that, quick agenda, well, for the those of you in the audience who are not so familiar with Dalma as a company, I will quickly talk about our corporation, Dalma, Dalma as such, no worries for those who are familiar with us, it's not going to take long. And then um, cheap versus economical focus will be really on some considerations about total cost of ownership of video surveillance solutions. And then of course, I think everybody is excited and interested to see um, what we do on the product side with actually the new Panamera W series and what we think makes it different. Um, the webinar is in listen only mode. Please ask questions at the end of the chat uh, and the, at the end of the webinar via the chat window. Um, I'm not capable of multitasking too much, so it's not possible to answer any questions during the call, but I will happily answer if there are any questions at the end of today's webinar. Fugers on Dalmayr, uh, no worries. This is not going to be 10 PowerPoints on the company, uh, and I'm pretty sure you can read the slides very well yourself. Uh, I just want to focus on two things on the first bullet point here. The first one is 35 years. We are very happy this year to celebrate our 35th anniversary as a company. And that is a message as such already because there's not many video technology companies that have been have survived more than three decades. Actually, as far as I'm concerned in the European region, it's only us more or less um that for the customer and for the installer has one clear implication and that is a lot of experience in our various industries that you can read down there and that is something our customers benefit from already in the consulting stage of any project because we just can you know compare so many um practical elements and practical experience from various um um, industries out there and the other one is video information technology what does that mean as we hopefully are all aware in the call video technology is the brink of a real quantum leap with uh, analysis with data with artificial intelligence technologies just being around the corner being developed we all know that there's a lot of dynamics in that a lot of myths also but a lot of opportunity when it comes to assistant systems assist um, humans when they when they perform their professional acts in video surveillance but also video technology plays a core role when it comes to analytics and capturing data to quote our CEO Mr. Dahlmeier he always refers to a video camera as a soon to be smart optical data sensor noting that there is no easier no more cost efficient way of capturing data from complex context situations than a video image so those two things are i think important and um, also when we go to the to the presentation today and the other one uh, is made in germany or make it a bit more 
open, let's say, made in Europe. Why is that important? Um, we are all aware that cybersecurity and privacy are some of the key topics in general, and in particular when it comes to video technology. And being a company that manufactures um, and has the entire value chain based out of Germany, we have a lot of control over every single step of product development of hardware we use. And um, we we also are proud to say that we live in a country that is and work and develop and manufacture in a country that is following the rule of law and where it's a bit unlikely that uh, a governmental institution will approach us as a company and say, hey, you know, please build in this and that vector in your systems. We want to have a look in some customers or other countries' networks through that. So not more to be said here, but uh, we see that that the, the Made in Germany brand, which is in some, you know, manufacturing and other areas a bit, you know, devaluating uh, within the global dynamics uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, it's a, a, a very important quality trademark or brand mark, if you wish. So, so much on Dalmai, a few more things um, that I want to share on the way we look at our customers, the way we look at projects, and to use or abuse the old Aristoteles saying, uh, the whole is more the sum of its parts. Uh, I think everybody who owns and drives a car knows that it's not only about the car, it's about you know where do you bring your car to service, how narrow is your servicing network, what's the price for service for additional products, what is the value of the car, how well have you been consulted when you made the buying decision, do you need a sports car, do you need a, a, a station wagon for your family and so on. It's not much different the way even actually more relevant when we talk about investment goods um, and B2B business. So having products and we come from the recording technology side that you can see in the right upper bubble here um, and then developed cameras pretty soon and we have with Panomera a camera technology in place that allows you to cover large spatial areas still in a way that is un, un pretty centered and we don't have a competitive product out there because we are uh, still patented with our Panomera solution. So this is cameras and recording. We work more and more, and more in developing uh, our software solutions in the hemisphere software platform for security and business where video management systems is only part of the of the whole picture there's a lot more modules that uh, you can attach to our software world to give you capabilities for analytics for data analysis and and data correlation which should not be topic of today's call we are most certainly going to set up another one um, to, to focus more on that aspect so those are the three product areas if you wish cameras recording software that's what you have to have even that is something that not every vendor can give you having um, feet on the ground in all those three areas but there's much more to it which we which we tend to call soft factors for example um, when it starts with planning we have the very important thing which we will elaborate a bit more in the next 20 minutes uh, can I already in the planning say exactly which area that I want to cover do I have which resolution quality? This is very important for court, court usability when it comes to criminal investigations, for example, but it's also very important to have a defined data quality when I want to do analytics with my, my video systems. How many cameras do I need and so on? With our 3D planning and project engineering team, we can create a a digital twin of the customer's environment all the way up to big football stadiums. We we equipped nine of the out of 12 football stadiums for the um, World Last World Championship in Russia, for example. Uh, so how can you make big, large installations like that in the planning phase, um, make planning as easy and cost efficient as possible? Uh, FAT stands for Factory Acceptance Test. That basically means that every installation that we or every every project that we uh, put together, we set up entirely, including all the network components, software, and so on, uh, in our uh, headquarter here before it and in our manufacturing site. 
before it goes to the customer. We thoroughly test it. Customers can come to our headquarters, get trained on the system and all that, depending on what exactly you need. And only once it's fully tested, it goes uh, on site to the customer. And then, of course, at the beginning, as I mentioned before, 35 years of experience, doing the consulting in the right way, make sure the customer gets what, what he needs, what solves his problems, addresses his pain points. And then, of course, also have the right service that we mostly um, realize with our worldwide network of uh, high quality partners out there, of whom some of them or many are in the call today also. So much on Dharma as a company, I want to spend a few minutes on a few ideas around uh, total cost of ownership or actually going beyond that, looking at the entire solution from a pure cost efficiency perspective. Uh, when there is a public tender for a project, it's always the question or the one vendor the offer will get um, finally will be bought that is the most economical solution. They never talk about the cheapest solution in a public tender, as uh, some of you are most certainly aware. And then when you are working for a video technology company, and that is certainly not confined only to Dalmaya, when you are at a trade fair, you have a lot of people still uh, coming to your booth and they ask you, hey, how much is one of those cameras? And uh, that is probably a very narrow uh, way of approaching a project or a solution because as we all know in today's time it's not only about mounting a camera somewhere you need software that uh, is either easy to use or not that gives you the results that you want the, the usability um, and the solutions solution you need recording hardware but you need infrastructure as well so if you have a solution that requires a lot of single sensor cameras you need a lot of masts you need a lot of cabling if there's a more elegant way using way less camera systems, you need less of that. And that gives you, of course, an advantage on the cost, on the cost side. Same applies, of course, to indoor environment, just slightly different. Then as I already mentioned, planning. Can you make sure it's not only putting a camera somewhere, you really can uh, define the resolution density in all the area that you, you want to cover. Uh, can you make sure in the planning that you plan most efficiently, so the minimum required amount of cameras only, not more than necessary. Uh, is there information coming out of your planning process that helps with uh, the mounting and the actual installation? So there's a lot of cost related to planning. And then when it comes to installation, how thoroughly is the system tested? Do you still have a lot of testing effort um, when you are on site and uh, implement the solutions or is it, is it plug and play? Mounting, of course, how fast, how easy can you mount your system's um, operations? How many operators do you need? What is the total number of screens you have when it comes to uh, your video surveillance system? How easy is the software to use? Or is there a lot of what is called unproductivity cost? That is, uh, when, when, when people spend time that are, is not productive but to, to operate the system, but, but they don't create any value in, in those minutes or hours. Do you achieve your security goals? I mean, if you have a perimeter and uh, still people steal stuff from your premises, that probably um, there's a piece of cost associated to, to that, or you can't uh, prosecute them because you don't see any, any details on the footage that you have. And then, of course, again, number of cameras has implications to maintenance and support. So has quality. How long can you really run the system? Uh, can you go beyond the, the usual five years because the build quality is, is sufficient? So all that uh, gives you a costing and making things easier, which you will see later. The key benefit of Panamera is that you need way less camera systems that, uh, than you need with conventional solutions. Um, gives you means less of, of everything what you can see here. And that, at the end of the day, makes things more cost efficient and gives you the most economical solution. Um, and what we want to show here, this is of course just an example, is you know how much saving do you have when you look at the total cost of operations of your solution and not only ask how much is one of those cameras. 
uh, spending a little bit of time on on the on the goal thing that we mentioned. This is actually taken, lent, borrowed from uh, IPVM, a website that probably most of you are familiar with, a very neutral, uh, completely advertising money-free website that does a lot of testing on video technology, video surveillance. They, uh, two years ago, actually went out to uh, different vendors, doesn't matter who and so on, that's not the, the point of the slide here, um, with, a, with a request for proposal. Um, which you can see here that was basically we want to monitor a farmer's market. You see a little uh, Google Maps um, screenshot on the right hand side uh, and we want cameras to monitor the area. Interesting bit is there is a Dean uh, norm out there that we will talk about a little bit more in a, in a few minutes that gives you an exact or more or less exact definition of pixels per meter for certain um, identification levels or, or uh, resolution levels. So the bottom one is 250 or more pixel per meter is what they call identify. That's typically the the resolution density where uh, in almost all cases a judge will say, hey, that individual that is sitting in front of me is the person that I see on the video footage, so I can give him a verdict. Um, whereas when you are in the 62.5 pixel per meter area, then you can see something is happening. There is people, but you will probably not be able to prove uh, in front of court that that the guy that was caught or so is really the guy on the on the video. And I mean, look at the, on the monitor, 12.5 pixels per meter. Um, to quote from one of the comments in when when that report was published, they just say, yeah, well, if you have that, uh, the police will come, they will laugh a lot, and then they will just go away again because you can't. See anything of relevance um, on on the video, uh, and then what came out of that comparison was that you have a price difference or cost difference for the offering between nine thousand dollars and one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. So just that is obviously the reality in our world of video surveillance technology, and not much has changed since two thousand and sixteen. On that end, this is how installations are being done out there. And uh, one of the key goals of Panamera W series and Panamera in general to change exactly that, make it possible to have this exactly definable resolution density. It might be different. You might have a situation where you want to do analytics, you want to see or identify, classify cars, persons, or people, then you need probably something like 62.5 pixels per meter minimum. If you want to really identify unknown people, we are at the 250 and so on, which I meant, what I mentioned before. Then plug and play is a very important factor, ease of installation, save time there. And then what you also want is have as few operators as possible cover a uh, large area as, as, or an area as, as large as possible. And then at the end of the day, it's the most economical solution that we are looking for. So defin definable resolution density, uh, mentioned again. I think many of you in the call can share this. Uh, this is the typical approach in video technology uh, until today is, you know, let's mount a camera there and then let's wait <clears throat> and see what we, what we see. Or do I know exactly what I can see where and in which image quality? Because as mentioned already, um, you need that to make sure you have the right data quality for video analytics and a proper uh, recognition level when it comes to court usage. How do we do that? We, as I already mentioned, in our 3D, 2D and 3D planning approach, you can exactly define where you have which um, pixel density. Here is the DIN norm, EN626764. Um, that gives you the exact uh, quality that you need and then you can decide okay what is the use case what is the goal I want to achieve and what is the appropriate pixel density what you see here is a screenshot of the actual Panamera uh, view the image it might be at the first glance typically operators get used to it in, in like 10-15 minutes uh, what do you see here it's like you you stand somewhere and you turn yourself around by 360 degrees 
And then you also look down because one of the unique features of the Panamera 360 is that we also have a, a detail sensor that goes directly underneath the camera. So basically, you, you, what you see here is a, a flattened out hemisphere, hemispherical view of the entire environment. And then in there, you have you can zoom in as often as you want, uh, and then have uh, your details views in the pixel density that uh, you require. And the way we do it when we plan is, uh, on the left-hand side, you see a screenshot uh, on the top. This is the 3D planning um, view. And then below is the, the real situation, again, with the aforementioned um, pixel densities. Again, the same applies when I want to run analytics. I need to have the defined pixel density to assure I have the right data quality in uh, for my analytics capabilities. Uh, again, three things here, court usability, why is that so important? Data quality for analytics, garbage in, garbage out is an old database uh, theorem, basically says when you put data, bad data into something that processes the data, the outcome, the output can only be as good as the input, obviously. And then what we talk to many customers about is the, the whole artificial intelligence based analytics today, this is really just the starting point. So we don't know what will be there in three, five uh, years when it comes to analytics. So it's probably a good idea to have a camera system already today that gives you that that capability to uh, make sure you have the right data quality already in the planning. Now, going back from all the artificial intelligence and the analytics to the core uh, functionality of, of any video surveillance, and that is basically having an overview. Again, here of, an, of a scene, there is some funny stitching technologies out there, some competitors put sensors in a circle, they put an, a PT set underneath, which then of course can give you only that overview of the, or the, 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 the detailed view of the PT set, you lose everything else, or you just put many individual cameras there. Or you have something that gives you a, a, a really smart display of a 360 spatial uh, context. And of course, why do we want to do that? Because uh, we have more control of the situation with less cameras. And at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, work relief for the operator, have one operator be able to cover more um, <clears throat> than, than before. So having that said, I'm trying to share a little bit of a video. I hope this works. Um, this is now a mock-up of what you see in a camera system, we will have some real footage as well. So below again, this is the overview. This is your 360 degree hemisphere, if you wish. So if that guy on the right side would leave the area towards the right side, it would show up again on the left side, as simple as that. Now you can zoom in and the operator can open multiple of those zoom windows with a mouse click. He can zoom in and then have a clear detailed view of multiple scenes that is very important especially when we think about complex situations where you have um, multiple areas that or multiple events happening in a certain environment and you want to have a look uh, at, at all of them in parallel which is not possible with comparable solutions um, then the other one i want to show you is here this is uh, actually in front of the football stadium here in Regensburg. On the top, you see the distance and you see the pixel density. As mentioned before, you also have the, the different levels, observe, recognize, identify, and then I can zoom in and have a closer look. And what also comes very handy with Panamera systems is uh, there is multiple systems installed in front of the parking lot. And once the system finds out that there is another camera that gives me a better view on a certain scene, then let's take this car, for example, and I want to have a different perspective. Oops. I can actually keep it and then go to the second camera and look at a certain 
situation, like in this case the black car, from a different perspective, from a different angle. The same applies when I go into an indoor situation. I think this is a, a nice comparison also here. I, in this case, it actually um, opens a camera that goes from top to the to the uh, gambling table here, um, and shows me the detail on the right hand side. I always see the detail view. I can zoom in, um, but I can also let's see uh, see that uh, lady in the turkeys. Um, Nightgown, for example, same thing as I showed you before. And let's have a look what happens if you do the same thing with the PDZ camera. So you already see on the top right hand corner, it's a very complex environment. It's not really clear what is the overall situation there. And then when you zoom in with your PTZ, what happens is that, of course, you get a good zoom view, but uh, which is marked in red over here. A big part of the entire scene is, of course, not recorded and and not visible so so much on a uh, quick view into the camera uh, another screenshot here this is actually a parking garage again you see on the top the overall view the 360 and then we have in this case two detail views the bottom one is this is uh, by the way including object tracking on the bottom one you have uh, the orange one and then on the right hand one you have the um, the details in the in the blue zoom box. Um, so so much on the camera. In the interest of time, I will hurry up a little bit. I mentioned the two <clears throat> plug and play system again here. Um, this is the situation as you have today: manual setup, multiple tools. You have to configure stuff manually, or do you have a system that is really pre-configured where maybe you only have to use one tool and where it few cool ideas where some engineers thought about uh, working closely with uh, working closely with with installers out there what are good ideas to make the mounting easier and make the implementation simpler faster and then of course at a lower cost what we invented here is the so-called Mountera mounting concept or mounting system Basically, what it means is that you have, and that does not only include the 360 version, but also the next generation of the uh, Panamera systems for large areas or long distances. We have a unified mounting system with a, what we call quick block. You see on the right-hand side with the, where the yellow arrow is, it's, it's a stainless steel, solid stainless steel bolt, the quick lock bolt that goes into a patented um, uh, yeah, counterpart where you can with one person mount the camera it clicks in and then it's already secured and then um, you can do the adjustment and then finally uh, fix it there uh, this quick lock system fits into various um, holders and mount systems there and then what's more to it if you look at the guy in the middle um, we have a smart one usage handle there. So when you open the package, you just grab it, pull it out, and then the black stuff on the bottom of the camera is foam. It's for protection of the camera, of course, inside the box, but it will stick or stay on the bubble. And then when you are on the building site, you just can put it down somewhere. The bad bu bubble is protected until really you have mounted it in the, in the, uh, in the holder. Um, not more details here in the interest of time, but it's a really smart system. By the way, going back on the Montera system, um, the, the versatility there, of course, also allows things like when you go into um, public area surveillance or city surveillance, for example, you have three or four hotspots that you want to protect, but not the entire year, but only for four or six weeks or something like that. You can mount the cameras for six weeks in that spot and then take them off, mount them for another six weeks in the next spot and so on. And you uh, save a lot of money, of course, because you don't have to buy camera systems for all the three spots, but only um, the holders. Potential use cases, I think that speaks for itself. Um, there is not that many limits, so uh, it depends really and um, we can put the camera systems in many, many places. Another aspect, 
some of you may have already seen that little junction box that is also part of the Mount Terra system. With the, currently, we can have up to four terabyte of um, video recording storage in the junction box to enable use cases where you have very low bandwidth situations. For example, we can uh, or will have in the future uh, analytics capabilities in, in that box. And then it's also, uh, of course, possible in depending on, on the situation, of course, that you have systems where you don't need any central recording at all anymore because you only record what your VCA slash AI uh, camera-based analytics give you as events. You only record those and you record them just inside the camera and then just take them out if something has happened uh, over, over your low uh, bandwidth network connection. So there's a lot of options out there uh to make to make uh the things easier and and more i t friendly last but not least design and build quality mentioned that already um manufactured in Germany with a high um focus on manufacture quality on material quality also we invested heavily in in the design of the system which will become more and more clear by the way once the next versions of of uh long distance and Area cameras will be released. This is how one design language across the the entire Dalmaya camera family, which you what you will see soon, which is important for uh, environments that are architecturally um, sensitive. So we all know that the video camera is not necessarily the most beautiful thing on the planet, and we've changed that with a design that is um, stays in the background. On the other hand, has its own its own language, and there's a, a, a whole lot of features that we don't have time to talk about the cables are hidden. Um, there is certain shapes that are nice to the to the optical perception of humans and so on that uh, went into the camera. So uh, I'm almost at the end of my presentation today. Takeaways again, if you w wish, uh, what I would love if you can take away from this call is really how important the minimum resolution densities for all sorts of applications, how we change the way of how the, the camera systems are mounted, the control and efficiency factor, less screens means, means much more operator efficiency. And then please keep in mind, and I think that's a, the key message here, it's the most economical, it's not the cheapest solution that if you're an installer in this call, if you uh, want to consult your customer or if you're an end user that you want to have that gives you the most uh, achievement, goal achievement for the lowest total cost of ownership. Uh, before we go into the Q&A session, I don't think there's good, going to be too many anyway. I want to share for, this is now uh, the volunteer part because we ran over a little bit already, but maybe you want to stay with me for a, just a few more minutes. I will share another little movie that I think quite impressively shows what can uh, actually be done with with a W series in this case um, in a, in an airport. It's a true solution or not a true, a, a real world solution that is already in production. Interior of an airport, we cover more than a thousand square meters with the, you know, more than 125 pixel per meter, which is showed here a little bit. That was the prerequisite of the customer. And then uh, the whole idea is we, connected or put two of those systems to get together to really cover that, that huge spatial area and then be able to uh, open high resolution zooms in uh, one or multiple areas like we do here. And then, oh my God, there is this little uh, left behind suitcase, the typical lost luggage, luggage thing. And we didn't detect it with AI because it's still science fiction but uh, we could see it. And then uh, the other guy is, for example, interested in the congestion uh, in front of the self-service um, things here. And then we do apply some AI now in the real world because we do uh, people counting. The same time over there now, hey, finally the guy picked up his little suitcase. So this problem is solved. Uh, we are happy that nothing happened and um, it was just uh, left behind for a few seconds. 
And here we can, for example, send an alert to some of the operators saying, hey, you know what, there is way too many people waiting. Maybe you send some more staff down there. And then when you run the analytics later, you may come to the conclusion that there is a certain time uh, when there's a lot of people always queuing up and you can take those data and, and optimize your processes and so on. And if you abstract what you just saw, I mean, there's multiple applications in many, many industries, uh, especially also when it comes to the analytics part where you can use data to optimize your processes to make things easier, better, and make better informed um, decisions. And uh, with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. Apologies for the slight overrun. I hope it was still worthwhile for you to uh, have a little bit of a glance in, in our um, new Panamera W series systems, you will in the aftermath of the uh, presentation or the webinar, you will receive an email with additional information, a nice product brochure, um, first and foremost, and you will also get a replay of today's webinar, so you can uh, use it if needed. Uh, with that said, I'm done. Uh, I will leave it open for a few more minutes. Typically, there's not many questions coming in in webinars like that but if you feel like you want to know something right now just feel free to type on in the in the chat window and uh obviously there are no questions coming in then um i wish you a very nice evening when you are in europe and a great day when you are in uh, the uh, asian part of the world and i wish you a very nice uh, morning in the US and I hope to see you soon in one of our webinars. Goodbye.